since I grew up. I heard stories about a man. I had these experiences that some would call dreams and visions. I knew that there was someone or something out there carefully crafting a path before me with precision. In my home, I saw pictures of a bearded man in a robe. And much of the darkness that indwells seemed to be dispelled with bright blinking lights inexplicable like a strobe. But Jesus was the name I couldn't readily recount. I heard he walked like me and he talked like me, but he was considered to be divine. But I figured in a life such as mine, which was an uphill climb, that to Jesus, me, I simply be counted out and only deserved his wrath. I mean, it didn't add up. I did the math. You take one boy, subtract an earthly father that he can't see, add in the fact that he has an unseen omnipotent father, multiply that by the fact that he loves me unconditionally, tell him that his sinning was causing division. So this father had to send his son to whom I owe my reciprocated belief and this somehow equals eternal life for me. So the older I got, the faster I ran. From Jesus and his voice, which was emphatic yet sporadic like whispers through a fan. And I had to learn for myself. So I picked up one of the Bibles that was strewn across the shelf and I read. I read about a virgin named Mary who was not yet married but traveled to and fro. Her, her soon to be husband, and some animal. I read about a visitation from an angel that I can only assume felt tangible as he stood in front of Joseph and explained the prophecy of old, that Mary was with child in her, yet conceived from the Holy Ghost. They would have a son and that they should name him Jesus and he would save the people from their sins. I remember thinking in this moment that if I was Joseph, this angel would have to visit me again and again and again because that's how my walk with God was going at the time. Real lackluster, a lot of back and forth. It's hard to believe in the stance of a man when your life lacks male support. But since then, I've been grateful for all the men that God has brought into my life that have helped me unpack the gospel. The Ramis, the Nathans, the Johns, the Sergios, and all of his other disciplined disciples. I studied about how his birth shifted the definition of time literally from BC to AD for about 30 years or so there seemed to be a break that I can only interpret as a father wanting his son to mature until that day the skies opened up and God said this is my son with whom I am well pleased and as John the Baptist baptized this Messiah the commencement of Jesus journey began I read about his travels from land to land and how he could change a man's life with the simple grab of the hand how he would approach fishermen and other phrases like if you come with me I will make you fishers of man. And how without a second thought, they dropped their nets, left their father and the hired men, and ran toward the light. I heard about how he healed the lame and helped the blind to see that his yoke was easy and that his burden was light. How he drove demons out of people and he raised them from the dead. And if I was burdened and exhausted, I could go to him and find rest for my soul. But the most valuable thing I learned from Jesus walking on water is that our path in this life isn't always steady. But just know that when it's time for you to step out of the boat, that Jesus will catch you, whether or not you can float. And it was in the middle of an inductive study of Colossians 2, when all of my circles and underlines kept pointing back to one name. And as I sat across the table from Kirby at 6 a.m., I uttered it again and again. I wanted to stand on top of the tables and yell, it's Jesus! It's Jesus is what this whole book is about. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Nothing in my life matters without Jesus. But in all these things, I had no real proof. His existence in my life only looked good in ink. I was so hypocritically analytical that I couldn't allow my heart to think until that day came that I cannot verbally fully capture but just know I understood the depth of his mission and that he came to set the captives free because there was none more captive than me. My encounter with Jesus was staged on a seashore. AC set fire to my former life and together we watched it sink. Together we watched the sun set as he physically pulled from somewhere deep inside of me a lifetime of embedded lies and he cast them into the sea. And as I knelt before Jesus, with an emptiness that I had never felt. He put his hand into the sea. He poured the water over my head and he washed me 
repeatedly. And as I stood, the dead weight from my past pain and shame sank. And when I was asked if there was anything else, the confession poured from my soul. He raised his hand and with one gesture, completely erased a lifetime of defilement that I have no method to measure. The waters from the sea rose up and completely washed over me. I just remember in this moment thinking that I could breathe. It's as if I was being passed through the birth canal and I came out as pure as a newborn. And for the first time in my life, I felt like I had just been sworn in as a brother to Christ. I had just been adopted into a family that I could not afford the price. A lifetime of feeling unloved, unwanted, and burdensome had completely been erased. See, Jesus is my healer. He's my brother. He's my rescuer. He's my cornerstone, my friend, my deliverer. He's my comforter, my companion, and my savior. He is the Messiah, my protector. He's the living waters that have kept me alive. He came as a ransom for me. He is Emmanuel, the divine son of the living God. He's the dispatch of angels in the second heaven when this life bears down on me. He's the light in the darkness when the shores I can't see. He's the light of this world, and he's the light of my life. Jesus. And it's because of Jesus that death has lost its sting, and I can live my life shame-free with no chains on me, because I am his beloved, and because he is my king.